some, what are some of the main challenges in mobile and embedded uh, computing? Uh, well, it's putting more and more functionality in a, uh, in, 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 a, in a system, right? Users expect better experiences, expect more larger screen sizes, more functionalities, nicer games, uh, all of that. And you have to do that with a limited hardware budget and with a limited uh, power budget, which makes it extremely challenging. And uh, solving this problem with some tool support is, is just the biggest challenge of it all. And also programmability. I mean, not a lot of programmers are uh, close to the hardware programmers, know how the system works, uh, know all the knots and the buttons they should uh, uh, push. So um, for them, they have to have some kind of interface to the low-level hardware, to the software stack, and, uh, well, LPGPU2 contributed uh, to that, uh, in my opinion, tremendously. Is it possible to get high performance at low power? Absolutely. I mean, we have high performance at low power at this moment. Not a lot of people realize, but the processor that is uh, uh, in your cell phone at the moment is more powerful than a supercomputer of, of the 70s. So we have high performance. Um, continuing on this way uh, uh, is, is the next step. And, uh, well, maybe you remember when the first cell phones appeared, you could when you only had text messages and, mo and phone calls, that's, that's all, right? The, the battery lasted for a week. And now if you use your cell phone heavily, it doesn't last for a week. It lasts for a day or maybe two. Uh, but of course, one day is kind of the minimum battery lifetime uh, that users expect. And then still to put more functionality and better experiences on, on the same cell phone, uh, that is a, a, a huge challenge. What are the three main things achieved by LPGPU2? Um, well, first of all, we provided a tool suite, uh, tool set that gave uh, uh, developers access to, uh, to low level details uh, through standardized interfaces, through uh, 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 in a vendor neutral way. Right? So you don't have to do it for every platform again. And uh, this has been a tremendous achievement in LPGPU2. Uh, secondly, um, the, the tool set enabled uh, uh, customers of Think Silicon, for example, uh, to develop tools to optimize their, their applications uh, without having to know all the hardware gritty details. And uh, that's a tremendous step uh, for customers of Think Silicon, but for uh, a lot of application developers. And I also want to mention a very nice result at uh, TU Berlin. Uh, I had a PhD student, Jan Lukas, who recently uh, graduated with honors, and he developed a uh, optimal data bus inversion scheme. Now, uh, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but uh, the state of the art is that you either optimize uh, uh, for the number of zeros, or the number of bit flips, going from zero to one or one to zero, right? And um, so this is implemented in actual products to reduce the power consumption of the data bus. But uh, what Jan and I and, and others of my team found out, we found the optimal way, right? And we modeled it as a shortest path problems. And I always like, as a researcher, I always like a, a result where we can show this is the optimal way. It can't be done any better. and makes me very proud. We are actually using the outcome of LPGPU2. I mean, either uh, uh, the companies in the consortium use it internally to develop, to optimize their own applications, or their customers use it. And even at TU Berlin, research institution and, and teaching, uh, we use it uh, in the labs for the students. The students work with it. And it's always very nice that even though a project has ended, 
the, the results are still being used and LGBTQ2 has been a perfect example of that.